This is the Dollamore Daily. Hello, and welcome to the Dolomar Daily. We're the, We're Bank, the Bank Sisters. sisters. We're filling in for Jesse while he's settling in in his new place in D.C. I'm Keisha. I'm Courtney. So let's hop right into it and talk about how personal January 6th actually was. We have a clip here from WTOP. It's a radio station in Washington, D.C. And as I was recently snowed in during the 14 inches we got here in Stafford, Virginia, I did manage to get this on the radio. So let's listen to a few minutes. 11. Well, tomorrow marks the one-year anniversary of the attack on the U.S. Capitol. It is intensely personal for many, many members of Congress, and they're taking steps to make sure it never happens again. WTOP's Mitchell Miller is on Capitol Hill. I was on the floor of the Senate on January 6th. Virginia Senator Mark Warner was among the lawmakers who were rushed away from the Senate chamber as the marauding mob made its way into the Capitol. There could have been much more damage, much more violence. You could have had members of the Senate killed if those folks who were out for blood had broken under the Senate floor. Warner... If you're a person who gets to work from home or maybe, you know, you're up on middle class, you might just want to hang on to your tits right now because um, <laughs> let's be honest about the coverage of January 6th. So sorry, guys. I mean, it's been going on from last night, uh, January 5th. It's currently January 6th until it's almost midnight now. It's still going on. 24 hours of coverage, but let's also be honest about the fact that the coverage of January 6th actually never truly ended. I feel like right. almost every single right. day we get an update about the committees, we get an update about something that's going on or some investigation. Mm -hmm. And so we do have some cr critiques or maybe some other perspective that maybe you haven't thought about January 6th because, listen, we're leftists, okay? Right. <laughs> we're uh, progressives. We're radical. We're black. <laughs> we're, we have a lot of different things. <laughs> We're so, women. I mean, all of these things. So let's, uh, okay, so let's first start off with that clip. The thing that stands out the most to me and that what really infuriates me is the fact that basically it's being said so plainly is that this issue is so important to the Senate and to Congress because it's personal to them, because they had to lay on the floor, because they feared for their lives in that moment. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm not drawing away from um, the reality of the fear that they felt, mm -hmm. of the threat of their life that they felt. You have to understand that we can all agree on. Sure. It's a terrible thing that happened. But at the end of the day, the reality is five people died, a couple of which, I mean, I think the majority of which died after the fact, mm -hmm. unfortunately of suicide or of a heart attack. And, and for this to be compared to some of the worst things that have happened in American history, mm -hmm. Pearl Harbor, 9-11. These are not, these are not remotely similar. And even, even beyond that, the coverage is not similar. I mean, I don't even think we cover 9-11 this much. I mean, it has been nonstop CNN every single day talking about January 6th. What else could you possibly uncover? What else could there be to report? What else? Do your little committee, do what you, you know, research it, do what you need to do, but there are a million other things that need to be worked on right now. I think the thing that, that's really frustrating is that obviously, if you're awake right now, you understand that there are so many press, pressing issues happening mm -hmm. in America, okay? People can't get COVID tests. Right? Well, yeah. That's a huge thing. That's very simple. It just happened to my boyfriend the other day. He had to go to three different places to get a COVID test. I mean... There are people who get COVID tests and they think they're going to be reimbursed by the government at this point. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of conflicting messaging. Like, maybe that's something that needs to be worked on or we could be committing a 24-hour news cycle to. Right. Or how about the fact that... I don't know, um, 68,000 people were already dying because they were underinsured or not insured before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic hit, 15 million people lost their employer-based health care. Right. So why aren't we talking about those numbers every single day? Exactly. A million people got <laughs> COVID yesterday. Why, why are we all of a sudden not talking about this? I mean... They'll talk, they'll talk about it in little bits and pieces and say like, oh, Omicron, there's a surge, there's a surge, and kind of talking about things, but nothing is being talked about to the extent that would make any change. I guess because to me, what needs to happen is, I mean, if people need to start calling their congresspeople or if you need to mobilize people, then you need to get them 
interested in something. And interested I feel like in what? Are we only, beyond well, this point? Aren't we well, beyond this point? We know what we need. They said they were going to send that home test. They said that they were going to, I mean, but people aren't <laughs> getting, but people aren't getting mad. People aren't demanding what they were promised, I guess, because I think they're being distracted by this January 6th. Thing. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Do you think that people are as interested in January 6th as the media is making it seem? I honestly don't know. I hope not. But I guess from the few people that I'm thinking of, you know, they are genuinely glued to CNN and interested in this. I don't understand why necessarily, but but, okay. but, but I see what you're, but something that you set up, you brought up, you know, the viewership. And I am wondering how many people are watching this live coverage, how many people are fixated on this live coverage and how many people have been fixated on on this January 6th thing for the whole time. I mean, it just sent me so much energy that could be spent on something else. And that's the something. biggest issue. I guess to me, it feels like such a slap in the face because we are facing every day, if you are working class American, mm. every day you are facing some sort of trauma. That word Hello. has been brought up a lot today during the January 6th coverage we've been mm. watching on CNN. Um, Trauma is real. Trauma is something that uh, clings to you mm -hmm. and really does um, hinder the way that you can move about your life. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I would like to counter is that at least the members of Congress have gold-plated health care where they can go and see a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. Most people, most working class people do not have that option. Right. Most people have to walk around with their trauma and work a minimum wage job, plus another one. Mm -hmm. Most people, I mean, listen, when I worked on Hollywood Boulevard, <laughs> okay, I almost got punched in the face because a homeless man walked in, you know, he mm -hmm. thought he was in a different world, like swinging at me and shit. You have to... You have to do that while delivering a burger, while also trying right. to well, maintain I mean, a, a tourist atmosphere because your boss is too cheap to hire security, even though this is a real mm -hmm. threat. I mean, it, it's it to me, it is a slap in the face of what working class people actually right. live through on a day to day basis. I couldn't agree more. I mean, the traumatic things that happen to you just in your normal job. I mean, I almost had to sue my last job because the lady was so abusive. I mean. I just think that we've got to learn to focus on what really matters. Th these, thi we these things cannot be so important. I mean, you were telling me earlier that they have that in the Senate they have or they have bulletproof in chairs? Congress. <laughs> in Congress, I just learned this in Congress they have. Um, I mean, I'm not. I looked it up. I'm, you know, I'm seeing like I, I had limited power uh, recently, but. Um, in Congress, they have metal backing on the chair basically mm -hmm. to act as bulletproof, uh, a bulletproof shield. Right. When, when all, okay, first of all, there's a, a shooting at a high school once a month or every other month. No, or there's I mean, more than we see, actually. Exactly. The they don't even report it. When has there been 24 hour, 24 hour coverage of a sh of a shooting like that or maybe like let's go through the history of guns and like see how we can maybe phase them out let's maybe um i mean cnn used to report on things around the world why don't you report on how in other countries they don't even have guns the cops i mean right. they're just so or, or why don't you you know bring in some experts and show how we can make some change or i mean why don't the kids have metal backing on their chairs is my question and why aren't the people in congress concerned that the kids don't have metal backing on their i, I guess well, They're and the thing, the thing I'm trying to point out is, look at how quickly they fix an issue when the issue deals with them. Themselves, exactly. Okay? That's well, what I mean by this is personal. The only reason that you're seeing all of this, the only reason that this is being shoved down our throats so much is because it personally affects them. And that's Listen, sickening. That's you sickening. might be pissed off by what we're saying. But look, I mean, look inward. I, I mean, it's all we can say. Like, I mean, are we wrong? I don't think so. You have to, you have to self-reflect sometimes. And it's not pretty always like to really think like, why is it that I'm so, why is it that I'm thinking about this? Why am I thinking? Well, I think that I think the bigger issue is that they're doing a massive manipulation on mm -hmm. Democratic voters by getting them to emotionally invest in this thing that happened. Listen, right. the investigation can happen, and I think it would be better served, honestly, to not be um, put Public. in the media constantly, mm -hmm. almost as like Russiagate was, and then we fixate on it. 
the thing that bothers me is basically the mainstream media is running cover for the inadequacies and uh, the inaction of Congress. Right. So we should be the infrastructure bill that passed. Ooh, bad, not good. We'll talk about the <laughs> details of that. Right. A lot of privatization. Right. Joe Manchin's wife, the commission she got appointed to, mm -hmm. serves to get a billion dollars. Do I how think much? that Appalachia's gonna get it? No, I do not. No. How much no. money other congressmen are making off of coal? They just passed this thing about the stock market and then the loopholes. I mean, there are. Well, they didn't pass it, but they put well, it out they there. put it out there. But I mean, but they didn't pass B Build Back Better. I mean, there are right. just. What are they do? What there are, are they we could bringing be, you? Right, we could be the news cycle would be better served, don't you mm -hmm. think? I, I think the thing that bothers me also about this is it reminds me a lot of um, sports coverage. So mm -hmm. a lot of sports coverage yeah. is talking about players and like you're 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 conjecturing what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. they've got mm -hmm. this knee injury, so what could happen here? Uh -huh. And also, you know, you know they've been down here, and also they've played this team before, so we'll right. see what's going to happen when they go face to face. That's what a lot of political mm. coverage has become and I don't need to see Donna Bash or whatever telling me what she predicts the president's right. going to say mm -hmm. at a mm -hmm. speech or what let the president just do the speech how right. about you cover um the fact that Flint still doesn't have clean drinking water how about we talk about right. the fact that there have been sporadic intense climate events that are happening all over the country mm -hmm. we're talking mm -hmm. about Nancy Pelosi getting on CNN tonight to talk about January 6th, I used to live in California. I never heard her talk about the drought. I've never no. heard her talk about a wildfire. Mm -mm. Never no. once. I've looked at her Twitter, never seen her tweet about it. No. And that's not even her tweeting. That's her staff. They couldn't even muster up the thought process to be like, you know, we should probably mention on like, that. you know, just like throw it out there. Just like, you know, could be a big issue that oh people care about. Yeah, and I, I think it's, it, it to me, look at that. It, to me, it's very self-serving. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. They're, look at what they're asking us to do uh, as citizens. They're asking your kids to go back to school mm -hmm. because they're they want you to go back to work. <laughs> <Okay>. Absolutely. <laughs> the, uh, be, let's be clear. They're asking you to only, oh, now you only need five days, you know, to quarantine mm. for, see, it's odd that there was a, a, to me, it just seems there was a whole flurry of people on Twitter that were saying, oh my gosh, my boss keeps asking me for a note, you know, he keeps asking me, you know, to see a positive COVID test, my COVID test hasn't even come back yet, should I go to work instead of quarantining? Mm. This is complete and total insanity. Well, and a I huge mean, reason of that is that we didn't pass, you know, we didn't get paid family leave Hello? In, the, I mean, in the infrastructure bill or in Build Back Better, which, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, we all knew that they needed to be married together and Joe Manchin was going to lie. Yeah. That's a different thing. But I guess it's just, let's remember that this is supposed to be a representative democracy. Mm -hmm. And to me, what this shows is that they only care about issues when it only very specifically affects mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Because... If you know that people are rationing their insulin in this country, if you know that mm -hmm. we have student lunch debt, student, <laughs> if you wow. know that, that when you only change to tokens for bus fare that mm -hmm. other people can't ride the bus, if you know right. that 95 just had a, a, I mean, suffered a, a 20, like five hour shutdown, <laughs> Because we don't have public transportation, a train running. Instead, we have 14 lanes of highway. Right. Which were also built by not Americans. So, I mean, they even farmed that out. The so contract. So, you're trusting, you're, tr I'm saying, if you're going to, you've already voted. Everyone talks about electoralism. You got to vote, you got to vote, you got to vote for the right person. Okay, fine. Once you vote for the right person, where is the accountability? Where are you holding them accountable? And to me, it seems that these types of distractions are meant to keep you from remembering the things that you were promised. Right. And they're, yeah. you're focused over here on January 6th, and you forgot that you never got that extra $600. You got $1,400 and not $2,000. That's not what was promised to you. Mm -mm. And I feel like people are not angry enough, and they're not... I mean... As, I mean, we've said this. You guys can go back and look at one of our other videos. You are harder on your waitress than you are on your government. And that's ridiculous. Yep, that's true. Giving Joe Biden a pat on the back. 
Uh, for I'm sorry, he had she was supposed to come in with a lot of experience, and I think really mm-hmm. take the reins on this COVID situation to follow this science. And from everything that we can see, he has not done that. He's been driven yeah. by capitalism, mm-hmm. um, and by making sure that the cogs in the wheel keep keep turning. And I think distraction was such a great. Mm-hmm word because the trump of it all okay Okay, the trump of it all you guys you guys because listen we're leftists okay i'm an independent i'm also independent independent. yeah you used to be a democrat but you lost me okay Uh, you have to understand the trump of it all yeah trump is there it's not just okay by saying this we're not saying that of course First of all, they could have impeached Trump. They had plenty of evidence, and they should have. And that's fine. And if they want to continue working on that, please do work on that. But I don't need all of you working on it. I need 10 people working on that, and everybody else let's work on something else. I don't need everybody working on this and doing a 24-hour thing about this. Trump is a specific... He's put there for distraction. He's always been put there for distraction Mm -hmm. from the beginning. And it's like you're just feeding into it. Like, don't you have people in your life who are just crazies? And you (laughs) just... just, You just block them out. You're just like, ooh, decline that phone call. You know what I'm saying? Just running off the rails again today. Exactly. Like, you cannot give them so much credence and let them take up so much space in your but mind also, because you're not doing anything else. Doesn't it make you wonder why, once again, is the mainstream media looking for a way? I feel like it's just mm. looking for a way to bring Trump into the conversation. I think, yes, because they were making a shit ton of money when mm-hmm. Trump was in. And the ratings were through the roof when Trump was in. And, I mean, that's probably part of why they're doing this, because it's tying them to Trump. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They need those ratings. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you just have to look at the whole picture. And I think, ultimately, for me, I would accept a, a full day of remembrance and, and the vice president mm-hmm. and president coming out to talk about these things. Um if it were things that affected more people in the country, you know, I'd like to hear about a worker who's been affected by jobs being shipped away because mm-hmm. of NAFTA. I would like to hear about right. a person who's saddled with debt because of the high APR, because of the bankruptcy bill. I mm-hmm. would like to hear about people who have insurance who, um, you know, are, need surgeries, but then their insurance say that they're deemed medically unnecessary. Right. Why don't we have full days about those people? That's what we, yeah. I mean, what to else me, can we say? Guys? This is a shame. I mean, I'm sorry. This is an absolute disgrace. And to me, it's navel gazing. It's self serving. Mm-hmm. These the 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 Congress people have premium platinum health care. Their travel, they get to expense. which you are paying for. <laughs> to me, like you are paying for this. We're also paying for all the. <sighs> It's just very frustrating. And so, like, you know, we can, we can talk about it with as much credence as we want to. Listen, our mother, you know, she worked at the Pentagon for 40 years. Her mm-hmm. office was hit for 9-11. She lost many people. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think for us, like, I would never compare, compare the two. No. To that. Like, I mean, we used to go to, like, I mean, take your daughter to work day at the Pentagon. Right. Like, like of course, the insurrection <laughs> was a big deal. But I think that the coverage of it has just been turned into a complete clown show. Like, you're taking something that probably was a big deal and was very serious. I mean, yeah, it is serious if the president at the time is basically he subliminally telling people, oh, we should march to the Capitol and we should do this and that. Of course that's serious. But the way that they've turned it into a circus is a complete distraction and it's not serving us at all. No. And, and you can go back and look and there are a lot of things, I mean, I saw, quite frankly, in social media that I thought made it very clear that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, They were very open about it. So the fact that I think we need to be following this investigation like a play-by-play, it's not serving us. Let's talk about what we need as the American people, as workers, as families, as people who go to school, as people who use the roads, as people who pay taxes. You know, like, (laughs) like, let's talk about those issues because, unfortunately, this January 6th, this, this was a very small... Very privileged group, and of they people. weren't <laughs> successful. This is my other thing. They were right. They weren't successful. So you know, let's have a couple people focus on it. The rest of us, let's move on and get some actual things done in this country. And if because if we really want to win over new voters mm-hmm. and try to, uh, you know, just get rid of the Trump base, not if you want to beat them, you've got to convince new people. To get on your side. And right. I think the best way to do that is with policy. So um, once again, I'm Courtney. And you can follow me uh, at Courtney Banks on Twitter. Lots of opinions there. I'm Keisha. And you can follow me on Twitter at one of these Keishas. Um, our Instagram is at Bank Sisters, As well as our YouTube play- page. Please do check us out there. 
Hopefully you like our hot takes or maybe you just want to like, you know, get hey, in the mix comment. A maybe bit. you disagree. Yeah, I, we would love to hear it because you know what? We really are genuinely curious um, about what everyone thinks, you know? Bye. Bye.